This young man has arrived at the most strict prison in the world on a secluded island, where inmates are literally prevented from moving, but he still has hope for escape. The year is 1931, and a man named Papillon is breaking into a safe to steal some diamonds. He grabs the jewels, climbs out of the window to escape the crime scene undetected, and heads through the busy streets of Paris toward a club, where he gives the diamonds to the boss of the French Mafia. The boss is happy with Papillon, but reminds him that if he ever crosses him, he will be promptly dealt with. Next, Papillon meets the love of his life, Nanette, and gives her a necklace that he stole from the safe as well, but kept for himself. He also reveals that he kept some of the diamonds for himself. A man from the Mafia sees all this. Papillon and Nanette spend the evening drinking and thoroughly enjoying each other's romantic company. However, their happiness is short-lived, as the next morning detectives arrive and arrest Papillon for the murder of a pimp who was at the same club where he met the Mafia boss the night before. Papillon remembers the Mafia beating the pimp up last night and realizes that he is being framed. He assures Nanette that hell be fine, since he has a perfect alibi. He was with her all evening. However, later, when Papillon and Nanette meet in prison, he reveals to her that there is no use in making an appeal in court because the whole system is crooked and he is being set up by really powerful people. He has been given a life sentence. He tells Nanette that he is fully focused on escaping now, but since he doesn't know how long that might take, she needs to forget about him and move on. A man named Julot overhears this conversation and informs Papillon that if he wants to escape, he will need money. Lots of it. Next, Papillon undergoes a medical examination along with all the other new inmates, and then they are all informed that they are being sent to a prison in the penal colony of French Guiana. The prison is famous for being a terrible place that no inmate has ever managed to escape alive. On the ship heading to the prison, Julot points out a man named Louis Degas to Papillon, telling him that Degas is a skilled counterfeiter who made millions through this criminal activity. Hence, he must have a lot of money on him. Papillon approaches Degas and makes him an offer. Papillon says that every person on this ship wants Degas money, so he is in a lot of danger. He offers to protect Degas, and in return, Degas can fund his escape. Degas refuses this offer, thinking that he is safe from the other inmates as long as the guards are around. However, as night falls, one of the inmates brutally kills the man sleeping next to Dega and slashes open his gut to extract hidden money. Dega realizes that the guards do not care if they kill one another and takes Papillon's deal the next morning. He says that if Papillon protects him till he is set up nicely at the prison, he will give Papillon all the money he needs. Papillon makes it clear that he is going to escape alone, and Dega says that that is fine because he has an appeal being processed in court and he will be out very soon. The next night, an inmate approaches Dega with a knife, but Papillon spots this and attacks him. A brutal brawl ensues, and after several minutes of chaos, the guards finally decide to step in. They inspect the inmate's fists and discover that Papillon was among those fighting. He is punished by being tied up in such a way that he cannot move an inch. The next morning, the ship finally arrives at the island where the prison is, Julot who managed to grab a knife during the chaos last night, cuts his own knee so that he is sent to the infirmary. The rest of the inmates arrive at the prison, where the chief warden addresses them. He tells them that he already knows they are thinking of escaping, and warns them that even if they somehow manage to escape the bullets of the guards, all that awaits them is a whole lot of sea, full of hungry sharks. He further informs them that their first escape attempt will earn them two years of solitary confinement, and the second attempt will get them five years of solitary, followed by a life sentence at Devil's Island, which is a complete and utter hellhole. As life in prison begins, Papillon immediately makes connections. He asks the man responsible for handing out duties to station him and Dega at the infirmary. Dega also tries to play a part, but since he comes from high society, his polite mannerisms and conversation style are not very well received in prison. The man says that it will cost them $1,000. For such a high price, Papillon demands that they get cigarettes as well. Dega adds that he wants a notebook, because he is an artist. The next day, the inmates hear that someone has escaped from the infirmary, 
and Papillon thinks that it's Julot. He is glad to hear that it isn't impossible to escape from this prison. Papillon and Dega are about to be assigned to the infirmary, but the deputy warden recognizes Dega and tells him that his son-in-law has been caught with counterfeit bonds that Dega produced. As revenge, he assigns both Dega and Papillon to work in the mines. Next, Dega is making a drawing of his wife. He tells Papillon that he is confident his wife will push his appeal forward and get him out. Papillon is skeptical of this, since the wife now has all of Degas' money, and she is free to do what she wants with it. It's unlikely she'll spend it trying to get him out. One day, Papillon and Dega are pushing a cart when Dega reveals that he has diarrhea, and his money, which he keeps hidden up his butt, has fallen out. Papillon stops the cart and finds the money before the guards figure out what is going on. During a break, Papillon meets a man named Célier, who used to be in the Navy, just like Papillon, before he turned to a life of crime. Célier says that if Papillon can engineer an escape, he can have his friends on the outside bring them a boat to leave the island. On the way back to prison, the guards give a lift to a local pimp who brings women to the island for them. Papillon asks the pimp if he can get them on a boat and offers a reward of $2,000. The pimp says his price is $5,000 and that he is only on the island for the next three weeks. Back at the prison, a few more inmates try to attack Dega, and Papillon defends him. During the brutal brawl, Papillon bites one inmate's ear off. Afterward, Papillon yells at Dega when he tries to talk to him because he is frustrated that he has to repeatedly risk his life, all because Dega is such an easy target. It is the job you signed up for, bro. At night, Dega says that he wants to escape with Papillon, because it doesn't look like he will survive till his appeal. Papillon refuses because Dega is too delicate and would be a liability in the escape plan. Next, all the inmates are gathered and Julot is brought in front of them. His escape attempt failed and he killed a guard in the process, so he will be executed. He is decapitated with a guillotine. Papillon and Dega are made to carry Julot's body to the jungle. Dega has a complete breakdown looking at the blood leaking from the severed neck. He is unable to move. The guard starts whipping him and Papillon attacks him from behind and knocks him out. Seizing the moment, Papillon makes a run for it. He is chased by the guards but he manages to get away unscathed. Dega is taken back to prison. At night, Papillon arrives at the pimp's house to get on his boat, but the pimp betrays him. Several men with guns surround him. The pimp reveals that it doesn't matter what reward he offers. The chief warden will offer double for returning a prisoner. Papillon is returned to the prison, where the warden informs him that he will be spending the next two years in solitary confinement on a different island. He tells Papillon that the purpose of solitary confinement is to break an inmate's mind and rob him of hope. In solitary, Papillon learns that there is a special rule about maintaining complete and utter silence at all times. He tries to keep his sanity during these conditions. The guard that Papillon knocked out arrives to beat him up. One day, Papillon gets a coconut in his water, with a note that says that he will get one every day. He realizes that Dega probably paid the guard, and this gesture of support fills him with hope. He decides to start working out to maintain his physical and mental health. However, soon, a guard inspects Papillon's water and discovers the coconut. He informs the warden, and the warden demands Papillon to reveal who is sending him the goods. Papillon refuses to betray Dega, and as punishment, the warden reduces his food rations by half. After a few months of living on half rations, signs of malnutrition are apparent on Papillon's face and body. Several months of these torturous conditions pass, and the warden returns offering a nice meal to Papillon in return for the name of his supplier. Papillon expresses his non-compliance by feeding the meal to the warden. The warden orders that Papillon be kept in complete darkness for the remainder of his time in solitary. In the dark, Papillon starts delving into his happy memories, but they quickly start intertwining with hallucinations in which Dega appears as a mime, he hallucinates a safe in the cell wall, which he tries to crack open like he used to, but fails. Finally, the safe opens by itself, symbolizing something opening up in Papillon's mind as well. Two years pass, and the guards arrive to take an unconscious Papillon out and transfer him to the infirmary. It is revealed that during this time, Dega managed to gain favor with the warden, and now 
he works as his bookkeeper. Dega arrives at the infirmary and finds Papillon with a rather vacant expression on his face. He apologizes because Papillon is in this state because of him. He also admits that Papillon was right about his wife. She betrayed him and married his lawyer. Suddenly, Papillon makes a derogatory remark about her and smiles. Dega is happy to learn that Papillon is all right and is only faking madness so that he stays in the infirmary. Dega asks why Papillon didn't give his name to the warden, and Papillon says that he knew Dega wouldn't survive the consequences. Papillon adds that if he ever escapes this place, he will lead a very different life. Solitary has changed him. Dega says that on Sunday, local politicians will be coming to the prison, and the warden will screen a movie for them in the yard. The guards will be focused on the guests, and this will give them an opportunity to escape. Papillon says that they will need the help of Salier, since he can get them a boat. Then, Papillon starts acting crazy and screams at Dega to get out. Dega plays along and tells the guards to restrain him. They give Papillon a sedative, which he secretly conceals. At night, Papillon hears the infirmary guards sexually harassing an inmate named Maturette. He tells Maturette that he has an escape plan, but it will involve Maturette distracting the infirmary guard on Sunday night. Maturette agrees, but due to the nature of the distraction, he adds that this plan better work. Célier cuts himself to be admitted into the infirmary and become a part of the escape plan. Papillon hands Dega all the sedatives he's been concealing, so he can put them in the drinks Hell served the guards on Sunday. Sunday evening arrives, and the four inmates start executing the plan. Dega gives the guards a drink laced with the sedatives. Meanwhile, Maturette begrudgingly offers the infirmary guard a meeting alone in the bathroom. While the guard enjoys himself with Maturette, Papillon and Célier make weapons out of their bedposts and use them to knock the guard out. The three men sneak past the sedated guards and wait for Dega, but just then, it starts raining, and all the politicians and guards head inside, ruining the plan. Célier suggests that they leave Dega and make a run for it, but Papillon says they will wait for him. Dega arrives and reveals that he has stolen the keys to the watchtower. Since the power is out due to rain, they can use the cover of darkness and escape from the tower. The gang manages to make it to the tower, but in the end, a fall awaits them. Three men manage to jump down gracefully, but Dega injures his foot, resulting in Papillon and Maturette carrying him. They meet with Célier's contact, pay him, get on the boat, and hit the ocean, free at last. However, their relief is short-lived, as they soon learn that their boat is full of holes, and they have to constantly take out water to keep it afloat. Célier says to Papillon that their boat cannot withstand the weight of four men, so they should get rid of Dega, because he is now a liability due to his injury. Papillon ignores him, but when they see a storm brewing in the distance, Célier becomes more insistent on this idea. He takes out a knife. A brawl ensues in which Maturette is thrown overboard and Célier almost kills Papillon. However, this time Dega comes to his aid and stabs Célier repeatedly. Maturette climbs back in and the three men throw Célier's body into the water. Dega gathers his soaked drawings. The three men try to survive the storm but fail to do so and get knocked out. Next, Papillon awakens in a hut and steps outside where he meets a nun. She tells him that he is in Colombia, and also reveals that she knows where he has come from. She says it's all okay, as long as he repents and finds God. Papillon finds Dega, and tells him they have to go, but Dega is too shaken after the Cellier incident. Papillon decides to leave by himself, but on his way out, he sees a police car arriving. He rushes back to rescue Dega, but before the two can escape, the guards spot them. Maturette makes a run for it and gets shot. Poor guy. He definitely sacrificed the most for this plan. They learn that the nun called the police, so much for repenting and finding God. For his second escape attempt, Papillon is given five years in solitary. When he emerges from this sentence, he looks like a weakened old man. However, the warden is surprised, because no one has ever survived five years in solitary. He asks Papillon what kept him going, but Papillon doesn't answer. Next, Papillon is brought to Devil's Island, where he will live out the rest of his life. The high cliffs of the island ensure that no one can escape from it. Papillon enters the Devil's Island prison and meets inmates who have gone insane living here. Among them, he finds Dega, 
who was sent here five years ago by the warden. Dega shows Papillon his dwelling, feeds him, and allows him to rest and recover. After some time, Papillon goes out and gazes at the sea. One night, he wakes Dega up and tells him that he has a new escape plan. He says that the waves around the island are strong, and all they need to do is build a raft and survive the jump, and the currents will carry them back to the mainland. Dega helps Papillon build the raft out of coconuts, but on the day of the attempt, he reveals that he will be staying on the island, saying that he belongs here, while Papillon does not. Papillon understands. He throws the raft into the water and jumps in after it. He survives the fall, and both men let out screams of joy and excitement. Papillon floats to freedom. Many decades later, in 1969, a much older Papillon returns to France and submits his memoir of his time in prison to a publisher, along with all of Degas' drawings. He is still a wanted man in France, but he is here because this is where he wants to tell his story. The End This film is based on the real-life story of Henri Charrier, whose nickname was Papillon. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like our channel and subscribe if you enjoy content like this. Also, let us know what movie you would love us to recap for you.